All right, coming up next, a matchup for the UFC flyweight division title. So here he is, the number one flyweight contender, looking to change that title here in 25 minutes or fewer and lead as the undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world. What a run to contention it has been for this young man. He has put together a long winning streak. He's got the finishes to make the fans happy. He's done everything to position himself for this type of championship opportunity. Now, under the lights, we'll see what he can do with it. the tape for this, our main event of the evening. More than five years apart, and they both possess a similar height and reach. And with the official introductions, here is the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out arena in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. <laughs> Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 20 wins, six losses, and two draws. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Introducing the challenger, Brandon the Assassin Baby. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 21 wins, two losses, and one draw. He stands five feet, five inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Fighting out of Suara Para Brazil, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, so back to your corners, come out fighting. They touch him up, and we are underway. Are you ready? So here we go, the weight and the height gets rid of the action right here on one side. Maybe the division's most all-rounded fighter, taking on arguably the biggest submission threat in this division. Because he's such a great submission grappler, I believe that this is the most dangerous fight for him in the division. Wow. He needs to maintain his space, stay away from this guy at all costs, and force him to stand up for him. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice the kick landed by the gentleman. Great punch landed with so much power. 
Look at him working at trying to shut the liver down. All right, so a nice shot there defensively to raise the guard and prevent any damage. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times you will block the shot that's incoming. And he landed the right hand there. Game of inches right there, Damn. boy. Wow. It was a good night if that landed. Just out of range with that left hook. Moreno gets hit with a kick here. Let's see how he responds. Three minutes to go. Oh, a little single collar tie there. Now he engages in a Muay Thai clinch. You better protect that head. Great job securing the Muay Thai clinch. Watch for big knees to the body, and eventually him switch it up with a big knee to the head. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. So just over 20 total strikes, and now landing for Davis and Figueredo. And there comes the separation now. Oh, strong punch there by the assassin, baby, Brandon Moreno. Got the single collar tie. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. All right, so again, the fighters clinch here. Kind of had an inkling we find ourselves. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Moreno circling towards the left now. <laughs> Checks that leg kick. Just missed with the left there. 45 seconds remain in the rack. He loaded up there on that high kick. Oh. So 130 seconds to go in what has been a pretty entertaining. Got clipped with the right hand. Oh, nasty elbows now, DC. Hard to see if a cut's been opened up, but right, gotta think at some point there's gonna be some blood. You gotta be so close to fight and throw this many elbows back to back. Great job. Well, he had a lot more than a puncher's chance coming in. Big knockdown for him in the previous round. DC, talk us through the highlight. He got in his opponent's face, landed that big punch that put his opponent flat on his back. He couldn't get the finish, but if he lands one more time just like that, he will get the victory. Significant damage to the body here. Another strike lands there. Oh! Straight right, he misses. Looking to land the right, just out of range. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Again, he's looking for that left. It's not there. Boy, top clump. Moreno's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. Good is that right hand. All right, some really grueling work here in the clinch. Both fighters really struggling to gain a dominant position. That happens whenever you understand the position. Both know exactly what they need to do. And when both fighters are trying to do the same thing, it's very, very difficult to get the desired result. Throws a big right hand, but doesn't find its home. 
Man, as he landed a high volume of strikes here in round two, definitely picking up the pace after round one. So he got the message from the corner, and now he is taking control of this second round. And they separate. Oh, blocks that kick to the body. Nicely done. Nice. Let's go. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. Got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Side control now. Round three next. All right, so that's the end of the round. Pretty significant damage done in that round. Cut on the cheek, sustained there from that strike. Now the cut man's got to get in there and close that thing up. Better to be below the eye than above it, sure. But nonetheless, this could be a factor now moving forward. All right, let's look back at some of the action in DC. A huge round, particularly when it came to that liver strike that really buckled his opponent. It buckled his opponent bad. I'm surprised that the guy's still standing. I don't know exactly what his corner can do to try to bring him back. When you take those types of strikes, you generally don't recover fast. Let's see what they do to ready? try to bring him back. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Punches in bunches, and he hasn't really shown any signs of slowing down here tonight. I'm not sure how much more his opponent can take. Trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kabura is not the arm, it's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kabura. Oh, he postured up there, gained some valuable separation. And now the ground and pound starts. Close guard. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High level. All right, side control now. We'll see if he can advance position. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? He's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moved. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. He's attack arm bar now. Isolated, but he picks him up and slams him down. He wow. lifted him through the air, slammed him on his back, and moved right into side control to get out of danger. Beautiful job to not just turn defense into offense, but also to end up in a dominant position. That is a huge shot there, DC. I'm not sure how he stayed up with I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talks to your toughness. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Moreno's lower jaw looking extremely swollen now. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Close guard. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. All right, that's three rounds in the books. We are headed to the championship rounds. All right, so a big round for him there, DC. We'll go back and look at some of the highlights. Big knockdown for him. We'll see if he can follow it up. You could see that he was flowing. 
everything was working in accordance to what he wanted it to be. And at the moment that it showed itself, the moment that the opportunity arrived, he jumped on it, got that big knockdown, and now he finds himself ahead in this fight. All right, so here we go. Fourth round is underway. Right. What is the fighter's mentality right. when you enter those seminal championship rounds? You understand that you are getting close now. The night is almost over. The goal is within reach now. 15 minutes down, 10 to go. You tell yourself you can do anything for 10 minutes. Shoot him, throw. Let's see if he can capitalize and lock up the sub. You got to try to find whether or not you're going to land. Brown and Pound here or if you're going to go to a submission. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Might be a submission attempt here, champ. I mean, just like this. Now, the guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. Oh, wow. Oh! Oh, now he's in trouble. Not tapping out tonight. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finisher position. Now watch, he goes parallel. And he's out. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Crazy accuracy and efficiency with these ground and pound strikes here, and if you're the opponent, you gotta intelligently defend or the referee's gonna stop him. You gotta defend, but you can see him now starting to gain posture in the intensity at which He's throwing these ground strikes. It's starting to improve. It's starting to elevate because he knows that he can get the finish. And attack the door bar. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Ooh, nice right hand. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. Final seconds of round four. 20 minutes down, potentially five to go. All right, so the round is over. You see, obviously, the fighter has a cut on his cheek sustained in that round, but better to be below the eye than above it. The cut man is in there trying to close it up. All right, let's get you some pictures from that previous round, DC. A lot of good work with the ground and pound strike. Yeah, he was able to control posture, get himself postured up, land big ground and pound as he ended the round. What a great finish to a fantastic round. Final round, you ready? Here we go, fifth and final round. Big punch land through the middle. Just misses with the jab there. Again, in the clinch. Big punch from the clinch. And now he's got that tight clinch. Connects with a right. And they separate. Trying to double up on that jab. Oh, he lands another strike to the body. Really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection. And these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Man, he's just got a great feel for the striking realm early in this one. The timing is on point. He's doing a great job of mixing everything up. Stuffs the takedown. So 
inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Now he's able to isolate that left arm. Look for him to step over the top of the head. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Submission defense there. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestling stand-up. Get to your knees, close your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hook. But get to your hands, stand up like the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than the half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Nice right hand. All right, working inside his opponent's guard here. You cannot sit in these jiu-jitsu guys' guard. And you can't have one arm in, one arm out. Guys can start throwing up legs, chasing triangles. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. All right, side control now. Now trying to isolate an arm. Yeah, he's trying to go to a Kimura lock right here. He'll either try to get the submission or use the sweep. tonight champ i mean you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard he's so skilled he's so tricky and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory Well, this is a night this fighter won't soon forget. There he is, the UFC flyweight champion who got it done. A beautiful submission to close the show. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Rivera is going to stop this contest at four minutes, 58 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by tap out due to an armbar. We got a new UFC flyweight champion tonight, DC. We knew it was going to take a big effort to dethrone the champion. He gets it done. I mean, the excitement that you showed was shared by the entire arena by this great performance. No one thought that he could get the job done tonight. He shocks the masses and becomes a UFC champion.